Hi gardening friends, I'm Lark and I'm in Wisconsin Zone 5 and today I'm going to show you my bog veggie garden where I have things planted in containers and sunk in the bog. Hopefully they're wicking the nutrients from the bog. Come on. This here is a cherry tomato called Juliet and this is how I do it. I dig a, I push back the bark and then I dig a hole in the bog, sink the pot, maybe six, eight inches, and then fill it in with bark again. These pots need to be planted about or watered probably every other day. If it's 90, then every day. This is my cattle fencing slash hog fencing, I think, that I arched and I'm using as a trellis for my peas and my beans this year. A while ago, a tree went down and crushed part of this uh, arch, but I was able to bend it back and the peas continue to grow up. Now it's been in the 90s for the last uh, couple days and really hot, so I'm anxious to see what these peas do. There's a lot of new growth on them. And I'll be picking today, I think. I did plant some more peas down uh, below for later harvest. And they're just poking through. And I have this chicken wire around it because there's a bunny that comes and visits nightly. So I don't want them to chew off the tender shoots. Also under the arch, I'll go in here, I have the pots. I don't have them, the beans and the peas planted directly in the ground. I have them in pots sunk in the ground. What I did here yesterday was uh, fill these pots with comfrey leaves and then I added lamb's quarters and worm poop. And I'm making a tea. And it's not an aerated tea. It's just going to steep for uh, two, three days. And I just stir it uh, a few times a day. Then I'll water the plants with it and it'll fertilize it. I put this bucket on top to keep most of the foliage below water level. I have green onions in here with the peas. Okay, this is a cherry tomato. Can you see how tall it is? <laughs> it's like on steroids, but it's indeterminate. So I guess it's going to just, of course, it's going to keep growing. In August, I'm going to chop it off so it stops producing uh, tomatoes, and then it'll concentrate on putting the tomatoes down here. This is one plant, and I started it. Oh, uh, let's see. I started it in on um, February 1st, I think it was. And I've been harvesting tomatoes for about 10 days now. The trellising system I'm using is uh, saplings that I stuck in the ground this year. Last year I had them in the pot and the wind took it and dumped the pot or bent the plant. This year, I think I have more support, so far so good, in the ground, and I have a tomato cage in here also. But it is getting top heavy. This one here especially. I have been getting ripe tomatoes for about two weeks now, and that's pretty good in Wisconsin. I started my plants in uh, using the paper towel method and then I transferred them into a pot and then grew the pots in my mini clear totes that acted as a greenhouse. But I have another video on that if you're interested in watching that. This one here is a celebrity and they're all fairly nice size. I've been uh, fertilizing with worm poop and uh, aerated and non-aerated planted lettuces at the bottom 
but they don't seem to be doing super and I think it's because the root system of the tomato is so dense and I don't want to feed a lot of nitrogen to the lettuce which it would like because then I'll get all foliage and no tomato so whatever it happens happens here the tree that went down and hit the trellis also went across all my cucumbers and across this pepper and across the fence but I only lost a few of the cucumbers and uh, over on the other end I lost a, uh, some kohlrabi that's it and my husband cleaned it up and we bent them back and the peppers fine the cucumber is coming back from having cucumber beetle it was nasty and I should be harvesting cucumbers already and they died way back and I planted a few more plus in these pots I had pumpkins last year and I should not have put the cucumbers in here there were grubs left from last year so it ate several of the cucumbers in here so next year I'll just toss this soil and start out new this is calendula and some dill and one cucumber lived this tomato over here is a Polish linguisa this one here I think is on steroids because it is huge they're not supposed to be that big they're more like can you see this one they're supposed to be more like a, a large Roma that could be two fused together I wonder if that's the I don't see a seam but maybe it is cayenne pepper There's the green cayenne. I think I, oh, I have some red ones. Oh, there's a red one. One plant's enough for us. <laughs> we like them, but uh, last year I had like three, and it was way too many. Peppers, these are red bells. And again, the pots are all sunk in the ground. I have a bunny that is eating my beet so today I'm gonna put uh, twigs like saplings let me see I'll be what I do for bunnies so they don't eat my stuff is I take twigs off of these saplings and I'll lay them across here now the bunny's going to get uh, confused you see these twigs are in here and he will hopefully go someplace else in here. So these are red bells with beets around the bottom, my second planting of beets. And then these are red noodle beans. And I put a, a old bird cage over it because that same darn bunny was eating uh, my beans. Up here it's attaching and the bunny can't get up that high he probably can get up this high he did get up this high that little stinker can you see he bit that the other part's right here so that bunny is growing okay i did the same with uh, another pot of beans and if you uh, can zoom in here you can see i have a lot of twigs in here because he was eating this before so now I put twigs around it and hopefully I do have some new growth starting here. And I have yellow peppers, yellow bells, and all my peppers were started uh, February 1st about too. And I had a terrible infestation of the cucumber beetle. And uh, he either spread disease or was eating them and so every few days now I'm, I'm spraying with soap water and it seems to control the fungus that they're spreading but I have some bells on here oh I don't know if you can see this big one in here but that's something for Wisconsin at least without a greenhouse then I put some basil in you see the tops nibbled off of all my kohlrabi 
that's that darn bunny. So I'm going to be laying that twig method over this also. Some basil, a tomato, a, let's see, mature beets. These are ready to pick soon. More uh, bell peppers. These are yellow, so that's red, uh, yellow, and green. For a companion plant, I use basil, and I also use borage. And I have the borage planted in an old sprinkling can, and I can move it around. I have a few more borage planted over where the calendula and cucumbers are, too. It's just ready to flower. Our old fire pit, I decided to plant lettuce in, and it's doing quite well. More than enough for me to eat and share, because I have some up in my west garden, too. This tomato is a um, brandy wine, and it didn't look so good in the beginning. It's coming now. I can see flowers coming. There's a red one over here started. Celery. Now, this is planted directly in the bog. And I'm hoping I don't have as much insect damage as I did last year when I blanched it. With blanching it, they were hiding in the, uh, under the paper, the slugs and the snails and, and worms even. Another tomato. All the tomatoes are twigged right in the bog for support. Something new for me is the hyacinth bean vine. And it gets these red flowers on and produces uh, a green bean. And they're good. They're very good. I pick them just about this size. I had read don't let them get too big or they get kind of tough. This is big beef and big beef. And then my potatoes. I have a yellow potato and a red potato. And I bought them from the organic store and just let them chit. And they're doing well. I've done that for several years now. I didn't buy sweet, I didn't buy seed potatoes. I just used regular store-bought organic. And I hilled them for uh, probably about eight inches. And then I hilled them again with straw. And then that's it. I don't want to go any higher. They seem to be doing good. They're starting to flower. And I'm debating, keep the flowers on or take them off? If I take them off, will they get more potatoes? So part of them I took off the flowers and the rest I'm letting flower. I also am growing herbs down here. And I have chamomile. This whole patch is chamomile. Some amaranth. That's the uh, burgundy flower here, plant. And I use uh, the amaranth for salads. Plus, it's pretty. You can see it coming up over that chair there. I have a, a wooden chair bottom out, and I have it around the amaranth. I also have in there uh, chickweed and uh, Plantain. We'll walk over there. This here is a pepper poblano. I have never grown before, so I'm anxious to see how it does. The tree went right across here, so it crushed this container, but it spared that pepper and this jalapeno. They're coming good. And the bunny is coming right up here and having treats. Inside my greenhouse that I have uh, chicken wired on three sides, this side, this side here, and the opposite side. This side here I have open so I can walk in and out. My blueberries are in there. First year I planted them in spring, and they're putting on new growth. And I had about five blueberries on there. 
<laughs> oh boy, were they delicious. But there's, uh, I amended the soil with uh, peat moss, compost, uh, soil acidifier, and then the bark. And here I have a, a few cayenne peppers and then some flower seed uh, and asparagus. Asparagus is coming up. And here I have some dill that's just starting and some cucumbers that had died back to the ground from that cucumber beetle, but now they're coming. I got vining and I have flowers. The other side of the chamomile, this is a, a herb called great blue lobelia. Some asters. And, oh, let's see, I have uh, calendula in there. And some more amaranth. Perilla. This is a pretty herb and tasty. I think it's uh, that Asian cuisine uses it for sushi. Also, I'm using this now, this weed or herb, and I'm forgetting the name of it. Purslane. Use this in salads too. Very high in minerals and vitamins. Malabar spinach. And I put it next to the fence so if it wants to climb, it can climb. And then another planting of cilantro. Let's go look at my pumpkins and see how they did. This is all our wild area. Wild grapes, of course, all over. And I used them in my pickles last year, and, and it helped keep them crisper. I think it did. I had no more room to plant pumpkins. So last year I have them over by mom's across the street, but she's not there anymore. We sold the house. So I fit them in in this area here and let them meander and hope that the deer don't get them. So far only male flowers. We'll see how that comes about if I get any pumpkins by October when for sure we're going to have a frost by October. Compost piles. I'm starting a new one. Back along the fence line there. And then this is my old existing compost. And I had leftover cucumbers, so I planted three of the cucumber plants in there, and they're doing well. And every year I will rotate my potatoes Next year, the potatoes go right here where the uh, compost pile is growing the cucumbers. And then the following year, it'll be over where the new compost pile is. So I'm gonna try to have a three-year rotation. So thanks for tuning in and viewing my garden. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.